Today I am going to be demonstrating how to draw a hand. Hi, I'm Lisa, the artist behind La Cree Fine Art. In today's demonstration, I am using graphite, but a lot of what I'm going to be talking about will apply no matter which medium you choose to work in. If you are supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, so make sure to head over and check that out. Now let's take a look at this tutorial. The first thing you want to do is make sure you're starting out with an accurate drawing. If that means tracing it, then that is fine. If you want to freehand it, whatever, just make sure it's accurate before you start shading. The shading is what's going to make it look realistic, but if your drawing is wrong in the first place, the shading is only going to do so much. Now I am using graphite powder in order to get my background just to save some time here. And the nice thing with the graphite powder is it really gets the graphite into all the little crevices of the, the paper. So when I go over that with the graphite pencil, it helps me not to end up with so much of a grainy gritty look. They're really nice, or the graphite powder is really nice for that, but it is a bit messy as you can see. I recommend working flat with it. I'm working upright just because that is how I have to work with my back, but this stuff, because it's so messy, working flat is definitely an easier way not to have an absolute mess. Now, the lighting that I'm doing for my background is not really accurate. All I care about at this point is making sure that it's dark so that you can really see the contrast between that and the hand. But the, as far as light source and shadow and all that, that I am not going for accurate here, just dark. I'm using a shading tool to soften that out. Now I'm using the Faber-Castell 900 series and working on Stonehenge. This is the Stonehenge sold in the individual pads of paper. It's got a smoother finish. It's a little bit more like Bristol vellum than the Stonehenge you see me work with for a colored pencil where I use the individual sheets because that has more texture. So shading this, blending all of that out, getting my dark background, and I'm gonna go all the way around the edges of the fingers. Notice that I'm keeping my edges very clean. I also wanna point out the shape of the fingers. Notice where the fingers curve, where those joints are. You don't want a bunch of straight, harsh angles there. They're slightly curved, and even the areas of the finger that are, are technically kind of straight in between the joints, they're somewhat curved as well. They're not actually perfectly straight. That is something that you wanna be aware of and really watch your reference photo for. I also wanna point out the curve. Look where the wrist meets the hand. That is not a straight line. It shouldn't just be wrist hand. You've got the bone there that is sticking out. Now, my wrist and hands, this is, I use myself as my model here, are a bit on the bony side. So you're. it's going to look a little bit more extreme, especially because of the lighting that I have here but no matter what body type you're drawing you should have some sort of indication of that wrist bone there so definitely be aware of that watch your reference photo now on the fingers again make sure you're watching that reference photo as well and avoid be aware that so often we want to draw sausage shaped fingers we don't want sausages. These should be shaped like fingers. They're not the same thing. It's kind of like when we draw rocks or clouds, we have a tendency to draw baked potato shapes. When we draw hands, we wanna draw sausages. They're not sausages. They're not one shape. You've got the different sections, the different areas for, or in between each of the joints there. Really watch for that. So now I'm going to start shading my pinky and you can see I've got a harsh line up against the ring finger and then that fades up as I move out of that sh shaded area. It's not just a line and that is something that you want to be aware of. Whenever you're drawing anything to do with people, you don't just have lines. People don't have lines. Cartoons have lines. People have shadows. And it's a very striking shadow. It's a dark shadow and I do have the harsher edge up against the light finger next to it, but it's not just a line. And everywhere that I put all of these shadows determines the shape of that finger and making it look more three-dimensional. You don't just want to shade it one even color all the way across. It's, it's going to look flat. Look at all of the areas where I've got lights and darks there. Now, when I draw hands, if that person is wearing a ring, I do not try to take it out. I know it's easy to want to simplify things, but honestly, the ring makes it look better. Sometimes having that little bit of extra detail really does help in making something look more realistic. And you can see the curve of the ring there that also helps add that dimension in that finger. Now watch when you draw your nail beds, don't go too dark. And I've gone fairly dark on mine, but the darker you go, you end up making that nail bed look dirty. So be, definitely be aware of that when you add the shadow there around that nail bed. 
Onto this next finger, I'm first blocking in the darkest portions. You can see again, I've got the harsher line where the shadow is deepest, right up against the finger next to it, which will have the lighter on, area on top. And then I'm fading that shadow up into the rest of the finger. But it's not that it, ha you're not trying to make an even shadow all the way across. Pay attention to your reference photo and how that light falls. You can see how my shadow curves up around the joint of the finger. This is helping to give you that dimension and to make it look like a finger and not just a sausage. Another thing I want to point out is that fingers or hands take a long time. When I drew or did this type of tutorial for the eye or even the hair, the hair you would think would be the longest, take the longest. That took me about an hour. This one, just for the hand, not the shading around the hand. The hand alone took about two hours. Plan on spending a lot of time when you draw hands. They are very involved. There is so much that goes on in there. It takes me much longer to draw a hand than a full face, much longer really take your time. Don't feel like it's something that you can rush over because it's not as important as the face. If you were including a hand in your portrait and you rush through that, it doesn't matter how good the face is. If you rush through the hand, you're bringing down the entire piece. Take your time and expect it to be the slowest going portion. There's just so much involved. Now, the little wrinkles on the knuckle, you can see I've got those there. I'm also going to come back through with, or I say knuckle, I, it's the joint. I'm gonna come back through with a Tombow Mono eraser, that's the silver thing you see in my hand there, and pull out some highlights. So I've got some of the wrinkles from the pencil and some from that Tombow Mono eraser. Keep in mind, the darker you go on those wrinkles, the deeper the wrinkle sets. So if you've got a lot of really, really dark wrinkles, you're going to age that hand by quite a bit, which is great if it's an older hand. If it's a younger hand, you don't want quite, that to be quite as bold and quite as dark. Now this finger, if I were doing this as a piece that I wanted to have this complete, beautiful hand drawing, this wouldn't be a position I would choose. Look at that first finger. It, looks kind of like a sausage just in how it's shaped. It's too straight. I would curve that somewhat if this were something, and I would use a different angle anyway for this tutorial, this hand worked, but that's something to watch in your artwork. When you're trying to create these beautiful paintings and drawings or even just a finished picture of a hand, this angle is what I would avoid, that straight finger like that. Well, there will be exceptions, but Overall, when their fingers are somewhat curved, where you've got a couple of them are, that are touching, you don't want all of them touching, that generally will look better. And I have to say generally because, again, there are always exceptions. If you hit the right angle, you can pretty much have the fingers in any position and it'll look okay. But in most cases, somewhat curved and a couple of the fingers touching each other at least will usually look best. Just not all of the fingers touching each other. Now for the lines of the bones in my hands, those are sticking out in combination of the, they show up a lot because of the light that I had in this photo and because of the position of my fingers. You wanna watch, they're not just lines. I'm here going over with my shading tool and just getting myself a base color, but you, they're not just lines. They have to be shadows that while they started out looking like lines, look how I'm building up the shadows there. And the deeper that I make those, the higher contrast I end up with on those shadows for those bones will make them more pronounced. You've gotta be careful because if you go too far, you end up making it look too much like a skeleton. And this hand, the position, the lighting, it's already a little on the scary side as it is. You don't wanna exaggerate that. Unless that's what you're going for, I guess. So I'm taking my Tombow Mono Eraser and starting to create some of the texture in the skin by having used that blending st stump to get that base layer on there. It makes it so that I can come back through with my erasers. I'm using a kneaded eraser and my Tombow Mono Eraser and just dabbing on there to create some of this texture. And I wanna make sure that any of these lines are going in the right direction. I've gotta look at my reference photo and make sure any creases are in that right direction. You don't wanna just start putting random lines and wrinkles all over the place. I'm using my mechanical pencil that is filled with AN4B high polymer lead to get the really dark areas around the hand there. And that lead is still not available any longer. The Stein, the AN4B Stein lead, not the same at all. It actually has kind of terrible results when trying to get dark areas. It's too scratchy, too hard of a lead. 
You can see I've got that little bit of detailing there and you really want to watch where you're putting these lights and shadows. You don't just want random highlights all over the place because if you put a highlight or a shadow in the wrong place, you can make that hand look completely deformed no matter how perfect your outline is on that hand. So you really want to watch your reference photo for that and make sure that you're very accurate. Now I'm going to come through and I'll even put a few of the moles that are on my hand. This is something if you're doing commissions for people, you need to ask them if they want that mole included. I've had some people request that I remove a mole, especially if it's on the face somewhere, they'll want it removed. If it were me, if I'm painting myself, I'm going to include all of them because that's what I look like. So double check with your clients before you do a commission if they do have any type of beauty marker mole and make sure that they want that included before you start. And hands are one of those things. If you are a portrait artist, I strongly recommend practice drawing hands in different positions because you will quickly find out some positions just do not translate well into art. It's not flattering. It doesn't, even this position isn't one that I would hang on my wall. I don't personally like that position that well. It works great for a tutorial, not so much for a finished piece of art, at least in my opinion. But if you can draw several hands, if you get used to drawing them, it's going to give you a better idea of what's going to look good in art. Besides that, it's just great practice because there is a lot to pay attention to in the hand. If you can draw the hand well, the rest of a portrait is going to be a breeze for you. And remember, like everything with art, there's no magical, this is how you always draw hands. This is how you're going to do it. It's like everything else. Look at your reference photo. Get used to looking at that and practice. It all comes down to practice. Your first few are probably going to look terrible, and that's okay. That's a part of the process. Just keep drawing. Just keep practicing and working on your shading and paying attention to that reference photo. Thanks for watching. Again, if you were supporters over on Patreon, the one hour version of this tutorial is available for you now, so make sure to head over and check that out. If you're new to my channel, I have new video critiques every Tuesday where I'm critiquing your original paintings or drawings, my own speed paintings, drawings, and tutorials every Wednesday, our Q&A videos every Thursday, and artist vlogs each weekend. So if you haven't already, I would love for you to subscribe so you don't miss out on anything. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google+, all of those social media sites are linked below in the video description where you can keep up with news, my newest work, and see real-time clips of whatever it is I'm currently working on. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Seeing this hand behind me in the viewfinder is really creepy. Like it's going to grab my shoulder. No touching. I don't like to be touched. Seriously, please back away. Move away. This is what happens when you don't get out much. You start talking to your drawings. You've been warned. Seriously, you should probably take a break from the easel every once in a while and go outside.